Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I'm going to have a little bit of fun with some cardboard rolls. Now these are like uh, paper towel rolls, kitchen towel rolls. Uh, I mean, if you want to and comfortable in your own home, you could use toilet paper rolls, anything uh, like this. Because even with these rolls, there are some really fun, so simple, so simple and extremely gorgeous techniques that we can do with these rolls. Now, just to make the most out of this, I am going to cut one of these rolls down into three. And this just means I'm able to switch up and use different colors. It means I can get more out of these long rolls. Um, but if you just have a toilet roll or something that's a little bit shorter, then you are just able to use it as is. It doesn't matter. The only thing is you want to make sure that you get the cut relatively straight or flat so that there is a nice uh, connection between the paper and your cardboard roll when you go to stamp down with it. So this is a background that I had created, I don't even know when, I think this is some acrylic paint, some yellow acrylic paint that was like used as a watercolour background. This happens to be on watercolour paper, however you most certainly don't need this to be on watercolour paper. Now I'm going to take some orange acrylic paint and some yellow acrylic paint and mix them together. This is just to tone down the orange a little bit because the orange was a little bit bright for what I wanted. So any paint obviously is going to work just fine for this, but I just want to show you the amazing results that we can get from something so, so simple. Of course, I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this, and I'm going to show you the finished cards as well. Now I'm just going to start pretty much randomly in the middle. Now I like the look here that this is sort of not a perfect, complete, uniform circle. Have I gone straight here? No, I haven't either. There is no rhyme or reason. This doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll show you in the next step for this one how this also does not have to be perfect at all. So just adding these circles, I'm roughly trying to make sure they connect, which is really easy to see because you just line up the sides. And even just this looks gorgeous. But with one more step, we are going to take this to the next level as well. So you could definitely stop here. It's nice to have something going on in the background. You could also stamp individual stamps inside each one of these circles and that would be a fun idea too. But I'm going to keep going from here and just overlap these circles so that they create this very, very cool pattern. Now, as I said, I did not line all of mine up perfectly. And in fact, they kind of go up on an angle, but honestly, you can't even notice at all. I'm just finishing off the pattern. I'm going to go right to the sides and then look how gorgeous this is. And we created it with a paper towel roll. So absolutely stunning, gorgeous pattern. Now, I'm going to keep going. I'm moving on and using some black. I'm actually going to use the same paper towel roll because uh, the black is going to go over it just fine. Uh, over the orange, sorry, just fine. And then this time I'm going to do kind of random circles all over. I want these to be overlapping each other, interlocking with each other, and creating lots of different spaces in between. Again, no rhyme or reason as to where they are. I just went to town, had enough circles, and then I actually ended up creating a few of each of these as well. Then I'm going to show you where I'm going to go with this one. The options are truly limitless when it comes to this, but I decided that I would really go to town with pretty much multi-colors here. This almost reminds me of like maybe a stained glass window or something like that, uh, the end technique. I'm not sure, but I do really, really like the outcome. Now, again, I'm using my acrylics as watercolors, so I have a little pot of water up there in the top left-hand corner, and I am just watering these down so that I get different strengths, and I have around five colors or so of the Dina Wakely acrylic paints, and then I am just watercoloring in each of these different little spots. Of course, you could use pencils, you could use alcohol markers, you could get some really good shading, actually, if you use some alcohol markers, uh, or came back in with another layer of the paint or the watercolors, that would look gorgeous too. You could use dye inks smushed out onto an acrylic block, that would work as watercolors, you could use oxides. I mean, truly, honestly, go for gold and use what you are comfortable with. So here is the first one finished, and then I'm going to show you the beginning of the second one, and then you'll get the idea of it. This one I'm going to use only black, and I decided to use shades of neutral colors, gray, white, and black, I guess. So I've just got a little bit of black paint. I end up using hardly any of it, and I just mix it in with the first little daub of white, and then I move my paintbrush straight over to the next white, so it's going to be a lighter shade, and then down to the next shade, and I do that a few more times as well to get lots of different shades of gray to be able to use here. 
Now, of course, this is just sort of another version of the first type. So I truly am speeding through this and there was no rhyme or reason. I just picked random spots and tried to make sure that the same shade or the same color wasn't next to each other. And this made a really fun background too. Now, this would be fun if you wanted to put a nice, bright, bold flower or heart or bird or something like that in front of this. I can see that looking really uh, gorgeous. Um, it doesn't have to be a, you know, condolences or thinking of you or um, something like that card. I think this could be turned into a really bright and cheerful uh, card as well, even for a birthday or something. So it doesn't matter that it's just kind of a neutral background. That often means that we can have a bright, bold uh, focal feature too. Now, I am loving using these acrylic paints at the moment. I think if you've watched some of my videos, you will know that I have absolutely gone to town. You can use these in so many different ways. I never realized how versatile these truly were. I love the tiny little puddles that the Dina Wakely comes in. I am loving the consistency of the paint. And I guess because they're in really small bottles, they have a lower price point. This paint is lasting me forever and I just feel no pressure when I use these. So I'm really enjoying them as per usual. I will have links to anything I can find um, that is still available down in the description box below this video. I think you're able to make these using whatever you have at home already. I'm pretty sure if you have been doing any sort of crafting, you will have everything to make these. But just in case you want to check out a product, I always appreciate it when you can support the links that I use, of course. Now to turn these into cards, I have taken some Lawn Fawn Vellum. I have taken the Big Birthday Words from the Woodwear Craft Collection stamps and I am going to pop some gold embossing powder on these and heat set this. Now this is one of the things I love about this Lawn Fawn Vellum is that you can heat set, you can heat emboss on this, you can dry emboss in embossing folders, you can do everything with this vellum and I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> now I am going to try trim down these panels just a little bit. Now at one point I thought I was going to use, have a little bit of a different look and use vellum on this uh, brightly colored one as well, but I actually ended up changing my plan and so that's why you can see that other piece of vellum in the background. Now for this one here, I just want to show you with the scripty birthday and the circles in the background, it gets a little bit kind of crowded. To me the, I mean you can definitely see the message, I just think it feels a little bit kind of skittled and scrabbled in my opinion. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to fix that a little bit. Now it does slightly defeat the purpose of the vellum, but the vellum was my plan. And then when I saw it didn't quite work out, we just have to adjust using what we have. So here I'm definitely thinking, mm, I mean, it's okay. It's just very scripty and there's just lines going everywhere. <laughs> so at this point I had these scrap pieces of white beside me. And sometimes going for the most easiest, obvious answer for me is going to work perfectly. So once I have got the adhesive on the back, I'm going to pop this strip. Now the strip just happened to be a little bit shy of the width of the vellum that I had. So that's going to work out pretty well. Now at this point, I already had the adhesive behind it. Uh, so I was able to just wrap the vellum around and we're looking good. I did pop a little bit more adhesive on the back where the vellum had covered up that little bit. So I had taken those off already to put on my card base. Now I roughly cut these down to be three and three quarters by five inches. My card base is going to be four and a quarter by five inches. So it's going to leave this gorgeous border around the outside. That's definitely my preference, but if you wanted to, you could do this straight onto a card base and this would look gorgeous as well. So at this point, I love the card, but I'm going to step it up a notch. As you know, I do love to add a few finishing touches. So I have these little gold kind of drops here. These have a flat back and a rounded top. And I tried these little ones. I thought originally I would go with the smaller size, but the, I think there's about four or five sizes in here. And I think it's either the third or the fourth largest size I ended up going with. So they're quite big, but I really love it. I'm going to pop them on all the little sort of intersections between the pattern. And I think this finishes the card off gorgeous. I think you could do this using some drops, some enamel dots, some any anything like this that you could add that little bit of sparkle. I think this is perfect amount to add to it. And then even when the intersection doesn't actually fit perfectly, it disguises it a little bit with these gems. So I'm going to pop a little dot of the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. That's what's inside the glue bottle. And here is our first card all finished.
Gorgeous and simple, but created with a cardboard roll. Now, we are moving on to this next one. I have this stamp here. This is called the Cling Cherry Day. And for whatever reason, <laughs> I just really love this one. I am going to stamp this out in some VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. This is just a little message coming your way to wish you a bright and cherry day. Now, I think that you could use this for so many different occasions. And I do love a good versatile card, especially when the sentiment is going to become part of the focal point on the front. Now, just with this, I decided to add some clear embossing powder over top. This would give it a nice little bit of shine, particularly because it was uh, part of our focal point. I am going to cut this down a little bit. Now, watch how I measure. <laughs> I refuse to measure properly. I pop it onto the card front, see it's too big, cut a smidge off each more kind of eyeball it, see if I think it's even, and then cut more smidges off, and then cut even more smidges off. I am terrible. If you had a die that would uh, probably just cut a gorgeous rectangle, that would work too. You could use your scissors, you could use some funky scissors, some uh, pattern scissors, that would look nice too. And then I kind of missed, I accidentally dropped that piece of footage where I went around and added some black ink to the outside of my uh, sentiment there. And then that way it was going to tie in with the black and the rest of the card that we had used too. Even though we created these circles with the black, I do not feel like it's overwhelming. I feel like this is a bright and cheerful, gorgeous card. We've popped it onto our usual four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And then so simply added that really big, gorgeous sentiment. And even though it covers up a bit of the background, I think it doesn't overpower it at all. So really, really simple. Two cards created using the cardboard paper roll so so simple i hope that you have enjoyed this one as i mentioned earlier all of the links will be in the description box below i also have the buy me a coffee link below if you would like to support me that way as well other than that i will see you in the next video thanks bye